ordained ministry could be very good for the personal ego. Each week, ministers like me speak for approximately 15 minutes on the subject of our liking, and people come to listen to us. And then, as soon as we're done, people open their wallet and give us money. Are we amazing or what? No, how many politicians do you think envy our position? Mm, no, everyone in his or her, her right mind, sorry, must aspire to have her job. Um, I think so. Well, believe it or not, some individuals, when called to this life, are not willing to accept it. Some individuals, like me, for example. The first few times, times, when uh, I heard God's call, I probably use all the excuses in the book to avoid it. I speak English with a French accent. I'm too young. I don't know all the right theological lingo like grace, salvation, regeneration. People will throw me tomato during my sermon because of my bad jokes. Oh. Like many others, I did not believe that ministry was for me. I doubted that I was called. Ah, oh, to be called. This concept of being called by God um, has played an important part in the history of the people of God and is still used today in Christian circles. However, um, it's sometimes more or less convincing. Uh, ministers often feel called to go to a new church, especially if these churches are offering a better conditions. Congregation could be feel called, could feel this strong call to get rid of a very boring minister. Last week, as we had the vacation Bible school here, the Camp Awesome, I felt this strong call by God to eat all those chocolate chip cookies in the kitchen. Mm. I resist, but it was hard to resist this call. <laughs> no, maybe I'm joking about being called by God because my call was not as spectacular as Jeremiah's one. During a very troubled time in the history of Israel, God showed up in the life of a young man named Jeremiah and without any sort of introduction says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you, I appoint you prophet to the nations. You will notice here that there's no discernment committee, no academic tests, no psychological analysis, not even an evaluation of spiritual gifts. And Jeremiah is not even asked about his opinion. No, no. God commissioned him to be a prophet to all the nations. That's it. Nothing need to be added. And how do you think Jeremiah reacted to this marching order. Oh yes, God, please send me. This is the, the, the answer of all my dreams. Not really. As many prophets before and after him, Jeremiah is not particularly keen to become the messenger of God in a world plagued by violence, corruption, injustice, iniquities. Furthermore, we're told a few verses be before today's reading that Jeremiah grew up in a priestly family in the town of Anathoth. This means he knew exactly, he knows exactly the kind of life he's been called. He knows that throughout the history of the people of God, the prophets have suffered hardship, uh, most often at the end of their own people. He knows they have been criticized, opposed, and rejected by virtually everyone. He knows that the message, their message led them often to be persecuted and even in prison. So who is and who in his or her right man? My, sorry, I, 
sorry, who in his or her right mind wants to have this job? Tell me. So, Jeremiah, as you can guess, tried to reject God's appointment. And he used all the excuses in the books. It reminds God that he doesn't know how to speak. He's too young. Does not have any qualification or credential. And the people will not listen to him anyway. And here Jeremiah does not try to be cute or humble in front of his God. He's just deeply convinced that ministry is not for him. God have, must have made a mistake. There are some, yes, who might be good at this. Okay. But people like him, no, cannot be called to be a messenger of God. No. In our Protestant churches, we tend to like this concept popular, popularized by Martin Luther of the universal priesthood or the priesthood of all believers. And we appreciate the fact that clergy are not necessarily more important than lay people. And sometimes in their bulletin, some congregation will write, Minister, all of us. Oh, it's all, it's very beautiful, very beautiful. However, when push comes to shove, how many times have we heard that only minister or priest are really called by God to do serious and important ministry? How many times have we believed that some are made to follow this path and we're not one of those people? We said, well, I cannot do this. I don't have the proper training. I don't have much to give. I'm too old, too young, too busy. I value too much my evenings. I understand that we are all supposed to be ministers to one another. I know there's different kind of ministry. I've heard that, but surely there's a mistake. I cannot be the one you are looking, God. No, no. Talk to the guy at the front of the church instead. Yeah, that's for ministry. And to all our excuses to avoid to be involved in God's church, to all the reasons Jeremiah used to avoid being a prophet, God, like a good parent, listen and replies, I hear your worries, your concern, your, your doubts. And yet, don't be afraid, for I am with you. God reassures. God empowers. Because God knows who we are and what we are capable of doing. And for this reason, God is not scared to set Jeremiah apart and to dedicate him for a very specific ministry to his people. Jeremiah is simply invited to trust in God, go wherever and to speak to whoever he is told, to proclaim God's good news, and to remember that God will always be with him. Despite what we might believe some days, we are all called, yes, really all of us are called to be involved in the life of the church. We have been chosen to take part in the myriad of ministries. Some are like preaching, playing music, teaching children, empowering youth, visiting seniors, um, listening to those who are grieving, raising money to support uh, local or oversee ministries and missions, and so on and on and on. Yes, some of those ministries are more visible than others. We tend to notice a little more those who are reading scripture on Sunday morning than those who are maintaining or building during the rest of the week. Nevertheless, all those ministries are important. They are all valuable. And we are called to use the gifts we receive from God for the good of the people of God. The story of Jeremiah's call speak to speak about our call, the call that we all have received as Christians. While 
we might not be called to be a powerful and, and famous prophet like Jeremiah, we're still all called by God to make a difference in our world, in our own way. Even if we are afraid and feel that we are not up to the task, we can be reassured by the fact that God is with us. And God knows who we are and where, what we can do and where we can go. And no matter how many reasonable or unreasonable excuses we can use, God is always there, always watching out for us, always patiently answer, waiting for our answers and even inspiring us in the ways we can change this world, in the ways we can make a contribution to this world, in the ways we can accomplish something for the benefit of all. Amen.